Hey YouTube, it's Kia. <coughs> this is still just a few things I've eaten, so I might cover my mouth from now from time to time because I'm trying to burp or something. I am tired. I realize that this is not a flattering angle, but I wanted to get this video done. I wanted to get it out the way, so I'm doing it now. Originally, this video was supposed to be about the Bronx and why the Bronx is the way it is, why I love the Bronx, why people should back the fuck up off the Bronx, but that's not how it happens. Last night I watched a video about, well, you'll you'll know in a second. It hit home for me, and I think it's important that I talk about it. Um, a little backstory. Last year I went to a school where the student body was predominantly white. The area was like 98% white according to the census, and um... I didn't necessarily feel welcome there. I left the city because I got tired of the fast life. I got tired of the VMTA. I was really tired of the VMTA. And I wanted to try to go somewhere new. There is nothing to do there. And if you've seen my older videos, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There is nothing to do there. Um, so, my roommate at the time tried to hook me up with one of her friends because I got tired of being single. And at the time, I had a preference for white boys that I thoroughly kick myself for now. But um, I had a preference for white boys, so she tried to hook me up with her friend's friend. And she didn't realize that he had a preference for non-black women. I mean, sexually, I was attractive, but nothing more than that. And he made that very clear. And I made it very clear that it wasn't going to happen if we weren't going to date so since we were both open and honest about it, I felt the need, I felt no need to cut off all ties and we kept communication. We kept an associate ship, if that's the correct term. Now, goddess, um, fast forward a couple of months, sorry, just got my hair braided and it's very, very itchy. Fast forward a couple months, um, he came to me in the cafeteria and he sat down and we were just eating lunch and I was really happy because I hate be I hate eating lunch by myself because I just eat and then I leave and that's kind of boring because I had a lot of free time on my hands and we were talking about our goals now if anyone knows me people who know me know that aside from being success successful in my field I also dream of being a great wife and mother my goal is to have that American family with my husband and my kids and the picket fence and the cat in the yard and the whole nine and he promptly informed me that um it wasn't gonna happen with a black guy I was never going to get that dream with a black guy and at first I laughed you know haha -ha, thinking that he was joking and I realized he wasn't joking and I got quiet I didn't I didn't actively defend black men in that situation and even though I didn't verbally say anything I co-signed his statement by not arguing against that statement by not saying <clears throat> that no it's not you know that that's not true black men are awesome I didn't do it and you know it's a year later and I feel really bad and I'm sorry I should have said something but, you know, I've never really had the best experience with black men, black women, outside of my family. It's, it just hasn't been good. Um, I grew up in an area that's predominantly black and Hispanic. And um, I just moved back from, you know, living with my sister who lives in a more quiet section of the Bronx. And, you know, these kids at home were loud, they were violent, they were harsh, stealing. And I didn't like all that. They were cursing, carrying on. And I didn't like all that. So I would just stay up under my mom. I put her arm around my shoulder and lay on her chest and just wait until she says we can go back upstairs. We can go back upstairs and I can watch TV again. And the people in my neighborhood did not like that. They thought I was bougie. They thought I was better than their kids. Or at least I thought they thought that I thought I was better than their kids. At five years old. A five year old thinks she's better than everyone according to these people. They could not stand me. And one of them had the audacity to tell my mom that to her face. Oh, well, Kia thinks she's better than everyone. And my mom let her have it. And as I was growing up, these people just didn't let up. They just didn't like me. They didn't like the way I looked after my brother. That I chastised him when he did something wrong. If I felt like he shouldn't be doing something, it was none of my business. And I should have kept my mouth shut. That is my little brother. And if something happens to him because I kept my mouth shut, then I'm guilty of whatever 
happens to him. You know, it's it was just this whole ideology that the people in my neighborhood had that made me so turned off from the black community. And, you know, they were ghetto. But then again, I, I live in a place that's considered a gated community, but it's also considered a ghetto. So, you know, we're like a closed off ghetto. You know, smoking in front of their children, blowing smoke in their face, playing loud music, fighting in the streets. Summertime, it was never without a shootout. So, you know... I wanted to get away. I wanted to have a different space. And being in a different space with this white boy at the current time, when he said that I wouldn't get the dream with a black man, I wasn't 100% sure that he was wrong. I'm 100% sure now, but I wasn't then. I had a whole issue with being black because I figured that being black was a burden. You know, I can't just wake up in the morning and, you know, brush my hair once or twice and then leave. I have to put conditioner. I have to tie it up at night. I have to use grease. I got to use a hair dryer if I want it to be straight. I got to use a flat iron if I want it to be straight. If I don't want to do anything to it, I got to get it braided. This took like 12 hours because of the length, I suppose. But it took like 12 hours. I could not deal with messing with the hot comb anymore because I didn't want to mess up my natural hair. You know, I only recently got over that. This year, I go to a new school where there's more black kids in the community while still sort of divided. It's still pretty unified. We even have our own open forum on Facebook. So, you know, I feel like I'm a part of something and I feel like it's not, there's nothing wrong with being black. You know, I own it now, but at the time I just didn't because it was, it's, it, I considered it such a burden. I couldn't come home without somebody making a comment about why am I home? I left. I should just stay away. How am I enjoying being with my white friends? Where's my white boyfriend? Like, what the fuck, Sarah? And you know, and I'm just using the words, the name Sarah. There's nobody in my neighborhood named Sarah to my knowledge. It's usually my, my mom's older friends, like Ruth or Ruby or something like that. Now, um, I didn't have the best experiences, so I didn't defend the black community. But then I realized, you know, did I owe any kind of defense? Did I owe the black community, black men in general, did I owe them any sort of heroism ship? Hero? Hero ship? Heroin ship? Whatever you want to call it. I didn't owe them shit. And the reason why I'm saying that is because for the longest time, I've seen men on Facebook talking about black women. I've seen races as a, you know, races come together to bash a black woman. Black woman. I have seen black men go on videos of black women talking about their ugly, their ghetto, their ratchet, you know, all sorts of the stuff. And then, you know, somebody white will comment something about that. You know, saying that they're ugly and get all ratchet. And black men will co-sign. Asi um, Asian men will say it. Black men will co-sign. Um, Hispanic men will say it. Black men will co-sign. Now, that's not to say all black men will co-sign on the cyber abuse of black women. But too many of them have. And it's, it was really, really discouraging. Pretty much, I wasn't meant for anyone. You know, all the statistics in the world, black women are at the bottom of the dating barrel, along with Asian men. But then when a black woman tries to go after an Asian man, she's not good enough for him either. You know, then who the hell am I supposed to be for? It got to the point where I started to wonder if the only thing I was good for was having sex and making babies. I don't have any, and I don't do it. But, you know, that seems... To, that seems to have been the only thing that black women were good for in the eyes of society because black men didn't want us, white men didn't want us, Asian men didn't want us, Hispanic men didn't want us, and those who did want us wanted us on the very low. They'll openly bash black women, but in the low, slide into your inbox like, hey, what's up, chocolate mama? And you know, what do you want, Chet? You know, so the video I saw last night was of a bunch of kids from the EU. They were being asked what they preferred in a partner. Now this video was mostly boys. And they were asking these boys what they want from a girl. And they said they wanted light skin, curly hair, big tits, big back. You know, the big tits and the big back thing I don't have an issue with. You know, that do you, that's your preference. But they all pretty much said light skinned. And when I say light skinned, people look at me and say, Oh, well you're light skinned. I'm not light skinned compared to, you know... I have a sister who has blonde hair and blue eyes and fair skin. I'm not light skin compared to her. 
My mom is darker than me. I'm light. I'm lighter than her, but I'm still not light skin. So I don't fall into that category. Oh, well, you're just mad that you don't fall under that category. I couldn't give a damn if I didn't fall under the category. A lot of these people didn't really seem that smart anyway. But, you know, it is what it is. Only one black boy said that he wanted a woman who was his complexion or darker. And that's a damn shame. And women, you're not exempted from this. Because the video showed some girls asking them what do they prefer in a guy. And they all said light skin, curly hair. What is this obsession with being lighter skinned? What is it? The closer to being white, the better looking you are? You could be bright as light bulb. If you're dumb as hell, I'm not interested. And it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be this whole, you know, oh, well, I only go for light skinned people. You know, I only go for light skinned people because it's a preference. The word prefer means to like something more than the other. So for black people to say, I just prefer white people I just prefer people who aren't black I prefer women who aren't black I prefer men who aren't black that's not anti-blackness and I only see it in the black community I don't see Asian men bashing Asian women I don't see white men bashing white women I don't see Hispanic men bashing Hispanic women actually whenever I see a, a Hispanic man talking about Hispanic women they're usually putting them up, up on the highest pedestal I'm actually really jealous how they revere their women only recently because due to the wokeness have black men started to defend black women and they still don't even do a good job at that recently netflix released a show called dear white people and it stars a girl who is biracial her father is white her mother is black so you know her complexion is darker she can, she's considered black and um but she's fair skinned compared to some of the black girls in the show and you know a lot of guys want to be with her and they don't want to be with the other girls who are also the leads. I'm sorry, I'm scratching a lot. This hair is really itchy. Um, a lot of guys don't want to be with the other girls like Coco or Joelle. Coco and Joelle are darker skinned girls. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that the show is racist or anything. I'm like, you shouldn't want to watch it because it's actually a pretty good show. It deals with the struggles within the that black people face within the black community but why is it that it doesn't happen until why is it that these two girls don't get attention until after the mixed race curly haired light skinned girl rejects you when both of the boys were darker than she was it didn't it didn't make any sense i go on facebook and i see black men talking about black women how we're welfare queens and we make a bunch of kids that we can't take care of and we're angry and we're bitter and we're jealous and we want to be white because we put weaves in our hair and we wear wigs like last time i checked nobody purchases wigs from europe nobody i've seen hispanic hair i have seen haitian hair i've seen asian hair but i don't ever see anyone importing hair from france talking about you know oh yeah well this is that caucasian you know type of hair it's never been that way not that i've seen and newsflash white women wear weaves and wigs too oh well they don't look dirty why does it look dirty does it look dirty because it's on a black woman and not uh you know somebody with a fair complexion because that's racist and like i said black women are not exempt from this behavior i've seen black women drag the hell out of black men talking about they're no good they're good for nothing all they do is run in and out of jail make babies and abandon them and all of our men are leaving us for white women and it don't make no sense and we need this you can't talk about unity when you're bashing the same black guy you want to be with and as i mentioned before i don't see this happening and other races i don't see asian guys doing it to asian women i don't see um white guys doing it to white women and i'm being repetitive but it's just this whole idea that you know black men and black women want to be together in society's eyes but they don't want to be together you know behind closed doors people are quick to say oh well, black people are loud black women are loud some of us come from families where we cannot be heard unless we yell. And, you know, to an extent, my family was just like that. And my natural speaking voice, the voice that I'm speaking to you guys with, is considered yelling in my house, which is very unfortunate. But this is how it is. If I want to speak in a softer voice, if I want to speak in a more indoor voice, voice I kind of have to whisper. And this is very annoying because this is not how I usually speak. 
and this type of voice is the voice that I notice a lot of black guys are going towards. Why do you want a mouse voice, Tyrone? Because they won't yell back. Because they won't, you know, take... Because they, you think that they're more likely to take the bullshit because of stereotypes where Asian women are submissive and white women are submissive. I know white people and Asian people louder than me. Stop the stereotyping. And then, you know, here comes black women. I, I had black women who were actively advocating for me to be with a black guy. When I was going through my issues with being black and being with black guys. And now that I've finally gotten over my issues with being black. And I've finally gotten over my issues with black guys based on how, my, I've, been, how I've been treated by black people in general growing up. Now all of a sudden is, you might as well get with a white guy because your future will be set with a white guy. I just saw a picture the other day where it was these two black women marrying these two white guys. Talking about they're never going to have drama in their lives. They're always going to have a place to live. They're always going to have... Food over the table, food on the table, not gonna have to deal with baby mama drama, not gonna have to worry about court dates and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, white people have problems too. Everyone has their issues. Do not lump all black people together. Do not lump all white people together because some of them ain't shit either. There's people that ain't shit in all races. And, you know, the foolishness has got to stop. This anti blackness within the community has got to stop stop and it needs to stop now because we have enemies we have white enemies we have asian enemies we have hispanic enemies we have black enemies and yes i'm saying we have black enemies because there's about there's a bunch of uncle ruckuses running around trying to get the approval of all the other races and therefore they'll drag their own down to hell there is a page on facebook i absolutely love called the kinfo collective at first, I was told to like the page because something she posted that one of my friends didn't agree with. I can't remember what it is, but I didn't even really realize that. I was just scrolling through the page and I see how much she's doing for black people, how she's speaking up for black people, how she's advocating for single black women, single black men, black families, black education, black excellence in general. She is just doing the damn thing. And there are black women coming to her page talking about, oh, well, I can't wait for your page to go down. I can't wait for your page to get reported. And I can't wait. And I'm going to keep reporting. I'm going to keep reporting it because you're full of shit. Like, sis, if you don't like the page, unfollow it and move on because there are, I believe it's at 90,000 people who love this page and who talk about this page. This page is a safe space for black people. And that, that word safe space is triggering but that's to other people. But that's a whole other video that I'm not doing right now. The fact of the matter is, is the Tom Foolery has got to stop. Stop the Conan. Stop the anti-blackness. Stop the stereotyping of all races. And just learn to be with one another without trying to bash others. Just to make your particular partner, friends, family member feel better about themselves. Until next week's video, which I might have a co-host, stay fresh.